Welcome to Online Algebra 2. This is section 11-3, Probability of Multiple Events. So our objectives here are to find the probability of event A and event B, two uh, events occurring, uh, and then to find the probability of event A or event B, one or the other. So to find the probability of two events occurring, you have to decide whether one event occurring affects the other event. So this is something that you really have to think about when you're reading the problem. So you can find probabilities of multiple events occurring by using the probabilities of the individual events. When the occurrence of one event affects how a second event can occur, the events are called dependent events. Otherwise, they are independent events. So, and here's an example, a couple examples. When you are classifying events, right, when you're trying to decide whether they are independent or dependent, the trick is to think of it, okay, did what I do with the first event affect the second event in any way? So, when we look at this, are they dependent or independent? You roll a number cube, then you spin a spinner. So if you think about that, you're rolling a dice and then you're spinning whatever, there's no, there's nothing in common there, okay? So these would be independent, okay? So, right, rolling a number cube, spinning a spinner have nothing to do with it. But if you look at part B, you pick one flashcard, then you pick another from a stack of 30 flashcards. Well, if you're picking one card, and then you're not putting it back, and then you're taking another card, the first time you have a choice of 30 flashcards, but you took the first one out, so the second time now you only have a choice of 29 flashcards because one of them is gone. So these would be dependent events, right? Because picking out one affects the other one. Now, if you were to pick one, put it back, reshuffle them, and then pick another one, now they would be independent. So it really depends a lot on the way the question is worded. Uh, let's try the got it problem. You select a coin at random from your pocket. You replace the coin and select again. So these would be independent because you're replacing the coin and then picking it over again. Okay. If you didn't replace the coin, like the card in the previous example, if you didn't uh, replace the coin, then it would be dependent, but these are independent. Okay. So let's look at the two different situations. So you, all you have to do is to multiply to find the probability of two independent events. So if there are independent events, the probability of A and B occurring is just the probability of A times the probability of B. So we just find the probability of each one and we multiply them together, provided they're independent. So you have to decide that first. Okay. All right, so you're at a picnic. There are 10 diet drinks, five regular drinks. There are also eight bags of fat-free chips and 12 bags of regular chips. You grab a drink and a bag of chips without looking. What is the probability that you get a diet drink and that three chips. So first, the probability of diet is going to be the number of diet drinks divided by the total number of drinks. So that's there's five regular, so that's 15. The probability of fat-free chips is uh, eight over 20. So in order to get the probability of diet and fat-free chips, all we have to do is take the two probabilities. Well, ask yourself, okay, are these two events independent? When you pick your drink, does that have any, anything to do with picking your bag of chips? Probably doesn't sound like it in this particular case. I guess you could uh, try to say, well, maybe they're all in the same bucket, uh, so there's less things to pick in yet, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. 
So in this case, we're going to say that it sounds like these are going to be independent events. So this would just be 10 over 15 times 8 over 20. Okay. So my probability is going to be uh, uh, 80 over uh, 300. Reduce that to 4 over 15, which is about 0. 0.267, so 26.7%. So that's the probability of getting the both things that you want, a diet drink and fat-free chips. Let's try another one. Oh, regular drink and regular chips. So probability of regular drink and regular chips. So there were five regular drinks. So that's five out of 15 times there were 12 bags of regular chips. So that's 12 out of 20. And we multiply these two together. 5 out of 15 times 12 over 20. And you could reduce them first before you multiply them together, of course. Maybe make it a little bit easier. But when we multiply these together and reduce, we get 1 over 5, which is 20%. So a little bit less. Probability is a little bit less to get those two. Two events that cannot happen at the same time are called mutually exclusive. If A and B are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A and B of them both happening is equal to zero. Okay, so let's think again. Let's decide, are these two events mutually exclusive? You're rolling a dice. Can you roll a two and a three? Well, no, you can't. Those two, oh, sorry, they are mutually exclusive. So yes, these are mutually exclusive because the probability of two and three is equal to zero. You cannot roll a die, standard dice. You can't roll it and have it land on two and three at the same time. However, you can roll an even number and a multiple of three. It would be six. That is an even number. It's also a multiple of three. So you can satisfy both of those two conditions. So these two events are not mutually exclusive. Same thing, rolling a standard number cube, are they mutually exclusive? Even number prime. No, those are not mutually exclusive because there is an even number that is prime. It is two. It's the only even prime number. Even number less than two. That is mutually exclusive because there is no even number less than two. Now, it doesn't say less than or equal to, so it just says less than two. There's no even numbers less than two. Okay. So decide whether the two things that you're trying to do uh, can happen at the same time. So to find the probability of either event A or event B, so now we're looking for the probability of one or the other, you need, not both of them together, you need to determine whether events A and B are mutually exclusive. So my, uh, my probability now is not going to be multiplied together like it would be if I wanted one and the other. It's now going to be added together. Okay? So we're going to take the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B together. Okay. If A and B are mutually exclusive, then I don't need this because it's zero. Okay. But if they're not, I have to subtract this off because I might be counting things twice. Let's see how that works. So at your high school, a student can take one foreign language each term. 37% of the students take Spanish, 15% take French. What is the probability that a student chosen at random is taking Spanish or French? Well, the probability of Spanish is 37%. The probability of French is 15%. 
the probability of taking both at the same time is zero because it says it. You can only take one foreign language each turn. Okay, so now all you have to do is add them together and the probability of Spanish or French is going to be equal to 52%. And you could change this to a decimals first and add them together, but it's the same, same idea. Okay. <laughs> add it to the other one. Okay. So when two events are not, and these, these two events were mutually exclusive, right? You couldn't do, uh, have them both happen at the same time. When two events are not mutually exclusive, now you need to subtract the probability of the common outcomes to find the probability of A or B. Okay, so what do we mean by that? Let's look at this. Suppose you reach into this dish right here and select a token at random. What's the probability that the token is round or green? Okay, and with this problem, it might be a little bit easier just to count. Okay, and we'll do that in a second. But first, let's find the probability of round. One, two, three, four, five out of five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's five out of nine. The probability of green is one, two, three. So that's three out of nine. Okay. If we were just to add these together, we would say, okay, the probability of round or green. I would think it would be eight over nine, but that's not correct because the probability of round and green, if we look at how many of these are round and how many of these are green, two of them are round and green at the same time. So actually we take the probability of this, so it's 5 over 9 plus 3 over 9 minus 2 over 9 to give me 6 over 9 or 2 thirds. So this would be 67%. Okay. And you could actually count this a little bit easier if we just looked at the picture round or green. So just could all the things that are round 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or green. That one's green. I got all the rounds and now I just have the greens. So it's six out of nine. Okay, so it's kind of easy to see when you're looking at a picture as small as this with this little with only nine choices. Okay. But as we start dealing with other types of probabilities or you get things that you can't quite sit there and count, uh, you need to remember that you need to count all the rounds, the probability of the rounds, probability of the greens. They're not mutually exclusive because some are round and green together and you have to subtract those off. Because you basically counted them twice, right? If you just counted the rounds, that's five, the greens, right? You count these two twice in that case. Uh, our got a problem is gonna use the same picture. So I'll put this down here. And, okay, suppose you select a token at random from the dish. What is the probability that it is square or red? So there, um, I guess we'll call this one red and this one oranges. These colors aren't really that good. Um, so the probability of square is one, two, three. Oops. And the probability of red is three. Okay. So are there any squares that are red? Yes, there is one. Okay. So it's going to be three over nine plus. So the probability of square or red is going to be three over nine plus three over nine minus one over nine, which is five over nine, uh, which is 55.5, so 56%. Okay. Part B, we'll do by counting. Okay. So the probability that it's green or square. So I'm gonna count up all the green ones. That's three, 
Now I'm going to count all the squares that are left. So that's 5 out of 9 as well, 56%. Okay? So you could use the formula, and it's a good idea to use the formula, uh, or you could just count up uh, all the items if you have a small enough sample size. Uh, anything here that we want to talk about? I think I think we're all we're all set. So that was eleven three, probability of multiple events.